Dr. Benai Prasad here from UCSF. I passed a milestone, 300 peer-reviewed publications. And I sat back and I reflected upon that and I put out a string of tweets. And somebody who works with me said that would make a great video. So here you go, 20 things I learned from publishing 300 papers over 12 years. Number one, don't include too many authors on these papers. Now, every time you go to submit one of these papers to a journal, you gotta put in the author's name, their institution, their email address, it gets to be too much. You got too many authors, you're wasting hours of your life. God help people with 30 plus authors. God help those physicists. Number two, if somebody's willing to submit the paper on your behalf, well, maybe they deserve authorship after all. Let's not be too hasty here. Number three, if the journal asks to suggest reviewers, and sometimes journals do, but not often, but if they do, you're gonna select people who you think like you or who like the work. Number four, you can never put it who likes you or who likes the work, and you're going to regret picking those people after all. Side note, top journals, they don't make you suggest reviewers. They know who to ask. Number five, the only reviewer who's worse than someone who hates your guts is somebody who's working in the exact same space. It's like the old saying that uh, academic politics are the most nasty because the stakes are so low. Number six, the papers that you think are the most brilliant and innovative are the ones that are gonna get the most rejections and the papers you think are dull and plotting and obvious are gonna get accepted right away. Number seven, journals are absolutely indifferent to time. Journal editors, they don't own watches and they don't have calendars, except of course when proofs are due. Cause when proofs are due, you got 48 hours to turn it in or they're gonna murder you. Number eight, you could be on a computer screen in the Amazon and they will find you and, and they will punish you if you don't turn those proofs around. Number eight, Show me a person with 300 publications and I'll show you somebody with 3,000 rejections because that's about the right ratio. Number nine, actually writing your own papers is hard. Hashtag, we didn't use any medical writers for this. Writing papers is necessary and you got to do it yourself. You can't use medical writers. That's farming out the cognitive work. It's unacceptable. Number 10, the absolute best thing you can do in research is to work with people who are smarter than you. And each year, I'm lucky to recruit a few such smart people and they do all the hard work. Number 11, the most important part of the paper. The most important part of the paper isn't the methods. It's not how you wrote it. It's the motivating idea in the beginning. Is it a good idea? And what's a good idea? A good idea has to be clever. It has to be topical. It has to be interesting no matter the result, whether it's positive or negative. And it has to not be too obvious. You don't want to have an idea in a space where too many people are chasing it because they're going to get scooped. Number 12, learning new methods and techniques is great. But uh, the most important thing when you teach someone is teaching them how to think of those ideas. And related to that, if somebody comes to me and says, I want to get more letters behind my name, I always say, you don't need more letters to do research. You just need good ideas and you need to start doing it. You need to apprenticeship. Number 13, open access fees. My God, 3,000, 5,000, they can make your eyes pop out. But the only thing more expensive than spending $5,000 for an accepted article is spending $60 so that JCO can reject your article. Come on, JCO, you can't charge me to review my articles. Number 14, rest assured, for at least one paper you publish, but probably more, you're the only person who's ever read it cover to cover. Your co-authors didn't read it cover to cover. The journal editor didn't read it and the reviewers didn't read it. You're the only one who read it cover to cover. And Lord knows, ain't no readers who read it cover to cover. 15, never let a delinquent unethical control arm Hold back your dream of a first author in the journal paper. Number 16, if your research mentor hasn't published 10 papers in the last year, then your research mentor needs a research mentor and you need a new research mentor. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a hurtful thing to say, but it's absolutely true. And I know people are not gonna like it, but you know, the truth hurts sometimes, but it's really true. You need a research mentor who publishes more than 10 a year. Otherwise they need some coaching and you need a new mentor. Number 17, it's not about the impact factor. Impact factor is not the most important thing in the world. But at the same time, no one reads most of these journals and you kind of want your articles to be in journals people read. So the impact factor does matter to some degree. Don't publish articles in journals no one reads. Number 18, one good paper, it's worth a thousand posters or it's worth even one poster taking up space in the overhead bin. Don't publish a thousand posters and shove them in those tubes and store them in your attic. Write one good paper, that's all you need to do. Number 19, if you're bored in the middle of doing a research project, Abandon ship, because if you're bored right now, ain't no one interested in reading those results. Number 20, Twitter is fun, tutorials are neat, YouTube is fun, podcasts are great, op-ed writing is a delight, but 
None of that is scholarship. The only thing that scholarship is publishing peer-reviewed publications and peer-reviewed books, and no one is going to promote you over these other things. I know what people keep saying. They keep saying that someday promotion committees are going to take into account all this stuff. That day's not today. That day's not even close. It's a long time from now. A lot of people are going to need to die before that day comes, and I might be one of them because I don't personally think it's scholarship either. Number 21, you don't have to publish academic papers to know what you're talking about. You don't need to publish academic papers to be a really savvy reader of the literature, but you know, it does help. It actually helps quite a bit. Number 22, if as you're doing a publication during the course of the paper, and as you're watching the sausage be made, you no longer trust that conclusion, don't publish that paper. Don't pollute the literature with things you don't yourself believe. Number 23, the only thing worse than a collaborator with too few edits is somebody with too many edits. God help us if they have too many edits. Number 24, if you didn't find this funny, you're doomed. Your career as an academic is going nowhere because you have to have a sense of humor and not take yourself too seriously. And on that note, this was meant a bit to cheer you up. And if you really want actual career advice, go to my website, find the contact page and send me an email and I'll give you some actual career advice. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I hope that these reflections really do come from, they do come from my experience having published 300 papers over 12 years and they might resonate with you if you're in the publishing business. So. Until next time.